Blue Shell asks, What series do you have regarding Ruby? Have you seen Red vs. Blue, and would you ever consider doing an AMV of it? Possibly even a crossover with Ruby. Um, series I have for Ruby. Yeah, I have a couple series for Ruby. A uh, lot of potatoes. I am Edward from uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends right now because I love potatoes. That is a really old reference. Anyway, well, not that old. Sort of old. Meteor? Medium old? Old enough. Anyway. You operate that mechanism to extend the bridge. Truly one of the great thinkers of our time. He will be remembered for his ingenuity. Free of mind. Oh, anyway. It worked. And seemed to attract uh, my main theory Happy for hunting. Ruby is that Ospin has something to do with the Grim. That, like, he's immortal. That's a semblance or something. And he somehow, like, accidentally created the Grim. And he created the Hunting Academy as, like, a way to try to make up for his mistake. Back up, mother, you don't know me like that. Which... It, it, it's the old version of that song. It used to be very classy, it had a different theme. Um, and of course, you know, the very prevalent theme now, that uh, everyone is Neo. Uh, Pyrrha is actually Neo, um, Yang's Neo, Ruby's Neo, uh, Raven is actually Neo, Neo's Neo, John's Neo, everybody's Neo. Everyone has become one. It's like uh, Wankershin. Everyone has become one with Neo. Oh, um, about Red vs. Blue. They were the first show I ever watched from um, Rooster Teeth. Which, uh, fun side fact, it took me, I want to say, five to seven years to realize that Rooster Teeth means Cockbite. Wasn't until they released a watch, and they called it the Cockbite Watch with their symbol on it. Before I'm like, no, that's not a Cockbite, that's Rooster Teeth. Oh my god. And at that moment, I like considered giving it back, like a scholarship or something, because I, 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 something was wrong there. Something was just. I should be smarter than that. Anyway, I'm gonna shoot you from a distance. Viable strategy. Nothing gonna go wrong here. I got time, and I'm moving back. They did not give you much uh, heads up before the charge. Ouch. Nope, nope, nope. Spin to win! Ah, that vulnerability though. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Red vs. Blue was the first show I ever watched. And I remember my friend had it on his uh, iPhone. Or no, his iPod back when. This was before iPhones, I think. Uh, this is back when, like, having an iPod was like a Good job, team. Yeah, you're, you're alone right now. They've abandoned you. They're getting ice cream without you. They're getting Neapolitan ice cream without you. That's right, everyone else is Neo but Ruby. She's the one. She's the chosen one. Chosen one of legend. Anyway. So, yeah, I remember, uh... In school, every lunch, I would, you know, go hang out with my friends, and the first thing i do is either steal or borrow his uh, iPod. You know, whether or not he would actually like, let me have it that week. And i just start... if I can get up there. I would just... Ooh... Way, I did a thing. And as far as I go. Okay. I did it. Anyway, um... So yeah, I just spent all of lunch watching uh, Red vs. Blue seasons, I think, 1 through 4, and I love that show. Season 3 was my favorite for the longest time. I like the new ones now, but I remember season 3 was just always my favorite. I don't think I'd ever be able to do an AMV of it, because to make an AMV of Ruby, I've watched every episode multiple times. I've tried to memorize every key point, every impact in battle, every fight scene, every bit of dialogue. That sounds really, really over the top, I know, but whenever I hear a certain part of music, I need to be able to remember and know, you know, what goes where, what I can use for what lyric, and the better, you know, kind of uh, access I have, better memory I have of, uh, of the scenes. 
easier way for me to uh, make my videos. For now, let's just focus on the objective. But I've only Get ever really watched Red vs. Blue once or twice for all the episodes, so I wouldn't remember the details as well. I might be able to do a. Uh, I might be able to. There we go. Might be able to do a uh, like a like a crossover video. Add a little bit of Ruby, a little bit of uh, X-ray and Vav, a little bit of Red vs. Blue. Because I don't think I can make a full Red vs. Blue video. I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying I might have the capacity to do that. I'm not promising I will. I'm just saying maybe one day. Who knows? I keep forgetting about that. Oh. oh crap, I keep vulnerability. Stop being invulnerable. Let me hit you. The people at home want to see you get hit in the face with something. Okay, never mind. Just basic attacks. Students, we're a quarter of the way there. Keep up the good work. Hmm. That's weird. Anyway, um... Oh, Flawless Wave is when you can get to all of them before they hit the, uh, thingamajig. John Tolley asks, who are your top three favorite characters? Gotcha! There we go. Uh, my top three favorite characters. Um, uh, my favorite character is always... I can never decide. It's a mix-up between either Blake or Yang. I like both their characters. I like how neither of them is just too deep. You have, you know, Yang, who is, you know, the party girl, the uh, over the top one, the aggressive one, and then also has a very maternal, caring sister side. And then you have Blake, who is a very. What the hell is going on here? Oh, there, there. Then you have Blake, who's a very, you know, kind of. You know, goth. Well, not really goth. More like emo. Just, you know, like the world on her shoulders, that sort of thing. And then you have, you know, particularly the new season. Um, we actually have to see a different side of them where they're, I don't know, more laid back. They seem like an actual, you know, like a kid in that situation, you know? Not always worrying about the fate of the world and stuff. Boom, finally got them. So yeah, no, I like uh, both those characters, and my top three, so one more. Uh, these are in no particular order, of course, but I would have to say Nora. Nora is easily one of my favorites. How do I... I barely use it, so... Oh, that's cool. Uh, I think Nora is easily one of my favorite characters. I think everyone needs a Nora Valkyrie in their life. Just someone who is zany, mildly psychotic, possibly violent, and just, you know, just keeps everything upbeat. Just keeps things interesting. I think uh, the world would be a better place if everybody had a, a Nora in their life. It wouldn't be boring, at least. Hey, so what are we doing today? Well, apparently Nora, you know, she killed Carden. Oh, Nora. Time to dispose of a body. Oh, nope, Nora said she'll only dispose of it if we get to use syrup somehow. Okay, well, that's today's challenge. Dispose of a body using syrup. We can do this, people. Got a little dark. Anyway, um... That's right. The symbol we've been seeing belongs to Merlot Industries. Let me see here. Uh, research and development Le corporation. Far before you, you just keep talking, Port. The company what do you mean your time? The of Mountain Glen, where they lost their primary you got a better mustache than you. Members. What now? They never oh, recovered from I the went incident there. and eventually shut down. Which begs the question: Why is their technology suddenly popping up in the Emerald Forest? Because they're going to be I've the villain in this game. For riddles and history. More of a man of action, if I do say so myself. I would love if we found out that Peter Port is actually like the boy who cried wolf. Onward, He's like, he hasn't done victory. shit. He just kind of like showed up one day for a job interview, got the job because he kept telling stories. He, I'd love it if he was a children's story writer. 
like these are all just like his pitches for story ideas and he's wondering why no one is picking them up they're all just his students he hasn't picked up on that yet let me see here um Lear Avlis I'm fairly certain I'm messing up these names um do you have a ruby OC if so what weapons semblance etc does he or she have um Sort of. For me that you found some old Merlot wow, that, that that's Ublek. That is the face of Ublek. Or it might be everything. Either way, I believe it should be worth investigating. <laughs> uh, I, I would love to put that in my paper. If my old maps are still accurate, it should be. My series for my final thesis out. paper are so very interesting. Like I found various connections between work. different events, and I believe this it possibly could be nothing, oh, or it could be everything. With Glen. Uh, I, I wonder how that would go over. Besides, you know, throwing the accent out there, I wonder how that would go over. This idea might be nothing, or it could be everything, or it could be somewhere in between. Bit of a margin for error on that one, but I'm fairly certain I may be somewhere within their right, possibly, maybe, huh? Anyway. Um, as for uh, Ruby OC, I, uh, I write fanfiction from that time. I always just, I've been writing short stories for years now. But they never really go anywhere. I end up writing the bare bones of a story, kind of beginning, middle, and end, how it goes, plot development, interaction with characters, stuff like that. But I never really publish it, because when it comes to fleshing it out... Okay, okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was cute. Anyway, yeah, so my stories very rarely go anywhere. I've got, I don't know, dozen, two dozen just, you know, sitting on my hard drive, just quietly waiting for the day to get to see the light of day. Anyway, um, I think the first... Oh yeah, I didn't know, there was a little bit of debris that comes out when you hit the ground. Nice touch. Um, I think the first OC I ever made was for a guy who could teleport, because, you know... Yeah. I already established I think that's kind of cool. Um, can't remember what the name I gave them was, but basically he was just a student of Beacon. Um, he could teleport. His weapon was, uh... There we go. Good job, team. His weapon was, uh, two daggers. And for what he do with for range, he would create little portal, like little like portal portals from the video game. He'd create a bunch of portals around him, and the other end of the portal would come out like attached to the grim or somewhere near the grim. And he basically just kind of shank through the portal, get these grim and their vitals, and you know just quick, effective way to get rid of them from distance. Uh, for up close fighting, uh, I think I've had a drawing of it somewhere, but the daggers kind of like unfold and pop open in joints, and they basically become kind of like uh, claws, or like a gauntlet type thing. And the fighting style would shift to close range, just kind of like jumping in and out of portals. Um, kind of like Weiss with their glyphs, but instead of, you know, shooting between areas, they're just kind of like popping in and out of portals. A lot of, um, uh, if you play uh, Bloodborne, which I wish I own, but I watch way too many uh, Let's Plays of, um, like the Beast Hunter in that. Just kind of jumping around, crazy, animalistic, almost fighting. John Lawrence. Yeah, probably pronounced that one right. Hey, Elemental Dar. If you could be any character in Ruby, who would it be and why? Also, would you change the weapon of that character? Um, if I could be any character in Ruby, I would probably be... I think I'd be Ublek. Because... I also want to be a teacher. I love that idea. I believe that the best way to prepare people for the world is to to teach them. Well, that's an issue. It appears the bridge is blocked. Hmm, according to my map, no shit. To through the city's old waterway system. Just pretend it's a day at the water park. I find it hard to believe that a world infested with like a predator that hunts people exclusively would still have water parks. Like you think everything that was non like, survival or military would be shut down. 
It's like you're playing Fallout 4 and it's like, hey, welcome to Disney. We're still open. Yeah, some people just like to forget the fact that, you know, we could die any second from some creature hunting us down and ripping our faces off. I just find that weird. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I like Ublek. I like his mentality to, you know, teach them so that they know how to take care of themselves, so that they can do good for the world. And here we go. I'm getting as many of these as I can. I'm sure I've probably like, missed a few of them, but they should help you a little bit with uh, your playthrough. Assuming you have the game. And I would recommend it. They've uh, they talked about how the game is going to be more expensive when it's released. And I know it's not like really a complete game right now, but the way I see it, you are pretty much pre-ordering the game, in my opinion. You're pre-ordering the game and getting a free demo in the meantime. So when it's done, you get a discount price, you get a little demo to play in the meantime. And um, I can't really imagine them just kind of scrapping the project and never completing it. Because they've got more than enough people just kind of like watching them all the time for this. They would not be able to just kind of, you know, end the project and get away with it easily. So it's a, it's a pretty safe bet. I'm usually not a big fan of uh, early access and pre-order and stuff like that. But it, this one seems like a decent deal. So, oh, ah, crap. Okay, so the whole invulnerability thing works both ways. Not bad. I'll stop complaining for now. You know, for now. Boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop. Boop, boop. That's festive. Anyway. Um. I keep getting a sidetrack from this one, sorry. Um. Yeah, Ublek. I like his mentality. I like, you know character in general, like the uh, teaching aspect, and uh, although I have to say, the accent is very interesting. I've always liked Caboose, and the idea that he's now intelligent is baffling. That's probably a terrible accent, but uh, eh. It'll do for now. Oh, nope. Ah. There we go. Um, oh, as for his weapon, I would probably switch it out because, you know, you know, giant baseball bat from Vulcan, yeah, that's cool and all, but I, I'd probably want uh, Emerald's weapon because it, it's a kunai and chain with a gun on it. It's, you really can't go wrong with that. Probably my favorite weapon in the game. Um, Ruby. Yeah, asked me uh, if I'd be willing to kind of, you know, go back and do the collaboration video with them. Yeah, I would. Um, just uh, contact me through the usual, and I'm glad everything's uh, looking up, dude. I'd be happy to. Uh... Oh crap, I'm out of energy. I'd be happy to work on the collaboration video. I don't really have any ideas right now, and I have a few things I'm working on, but. We can definitely start talking about it. Oh, and also they asked me what is my favorite type of cookie. Gotcha! Uh, anything with peanuts in it. I mean, like peanut butter in it. So probably a peanut butter cookie. Or an Oreo. Peanut butter Oreo. Yeah. That's it. Hmm. Oh, still fighting. Left. Oh, it's a Nursa. Why wouldn't it be a Nursa? Quick, John. Operation Meat Shield. Okay, wow. One hit. How oh, good, ground pounds. Why do I feel like Ursa would make an awesome unlockable character? The Ursa that turned its back on its kind. He is Ursa, Grim Hunter. This summer on Fox. <laughs> anyway, um, 
Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Aha! The door is open! How very astute! I feel like I got angry with that last one. Prepare for your greatest moments. Prepare for your finest hour. The dream